الحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأسيلا السلام عليكم Eid Mubarak. Uh, we are here for a blessed occasion. Inshallah, we will start the Eid prayer. Uh, we will start with seven takbirat, followed by five, and then we will be, proceed with the khutbah as well. Uh, this is a joyous occasion, and inshallah, we look forward to engaging with you all. There's a number of festivities planned. As you can see, the whole block and facility uh, of the street, Islamic Way, has been blocked off. Just in terms of a few logistical items, please make sure that you're not blocking any of the roads, or please make sure that you are also accommodating your fellow brothers and sisters as well. So inshallah, we will start now. Brothers, you can move forward a bit because we want to make sure there's plenty of room. You can move up a bit more. It's good. Allahu Akbar 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 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Ar Rahman Ar Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in Ihdinas siratal mustaqim Siratal ladhina an'amtu alayhim Ghayril maktubi alayhim wa radhalin Ameen Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Amma yatasalun anna al-banjabil azim Alladhi huma fihi muqtanifun Qalla sayyallimun Thumma qalla sayyallimun Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu liman hamida Allahu Akbar 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 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Ar-Rahman Rahim Malik Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihtina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina Anamtu Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الظالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل هو الله أحد الله سمر لم يلد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله حول لك وإلا بلا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفر ونتوب عليه ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا والسيئات عملنا منا يهدل فحول محتار ومنا يدل فلنا تجد له ولي مرشدا وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على أبدك رسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عما بعد. The praise be to Allah subhanahu wa taala. The praise. We praise Him. We seek help from Him. We ask forgiveness from Him. We repent to Allah subhanahu wa taala. We seek refuge from our own evil deeds. From our own. Inclination, our own bad inclinations, our own bad misguidance. Anyone who has indeed been guided by Allah, He's indeed guided. And anyone who's been misguided, you won't find a partner, an association, uh, any guide to assist you. I bear witness, Ashadu, and we collectively bear witness, Nashadu, that there is no deity except Allah, the only one without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is His servant and His messenger. We ask Allah to send salutations and prayers and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his servant, 
upon your servant and your messenger, Muhammad, Prophet uh, Muhammad, and upon his family and all his companions, and what follows of that excellent salutation, Amaba. Dear beloved believers, Muslims, we thank Allah to be able to come together for this beautiful occasion for the Eid, the Eid al Adha, Eid al Kabir, the greater reoccurring continual Eid. Various places throughout the world, you call it Eid al-Adha, other places, if you studied in West Africa, lived in West Africa, you call it Tabaski. It is a tradition of recognizing the greater Eid, the greater responsibility. It is the victorious win of the movement, the transition from moving out from the individual accomplishment and toward the collective human victory. Our brothers and sisters yesterday convened on Arafat this most auspicious occasion in which they dialogued with one another, they engaged with one another, and they followed Allah's guidance. The guidance and the one who heals, as Allah says in the Quran, وَيَشْفِي صَدُورُ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah shall heal the breast of the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ Mankind, there has come to your guidance from your Lord and a healing for the diseases in your hearts and for those who believe in a guidance and a mercy. And our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, comes who is the Khatim Nabi, he is the seal of the Prophets. We know him as He's a mercy to all the worlds. Who's this Muhammad? This person that you chose to be your leader on this most auspicious occasion for the Eid. Muhammad, this mercy, he extended the mercy in the moment. And in this most auspicious occasion for the Eid, we are extending the mercy to our horizontal man and vertically to the heavens. We connect to our brothers and sisters externally. We work on our inward alignment, but we also work on our external alignment. Our external alignment must be exactly in perfect form with our internal alignment. And our brothers today who are coming together in this spirit of liti arafu, in this spirit of getting to know one another, they have decided to take that journey of a lifetime. That journey in which they have followed the words of God, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High. He is in the Quran, Allah says, The one who created you shall guide you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who constantly gives us and creates us to be in change. Our whole heart, our whole essence is in change. The whole beating of the heart is in movement. Constantly in change as the heavens are moving and constantly in perfect order and in perfect obedience toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This day is also the victory of Ibrahim Hanifa, Abraham the upright. And our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has said that he comes as a continuation to build off of the tradition of the ancient. It is the Milat al Ibrahim, it is the pattern of Abraham. It is the pattern of Ibrahim. What is that pattern? It is the moral excellence. It is the, it is the ethical excellence. It is the spiritual excellence. It is the state of afiyah. It is that state of, uh, of, 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 of everything in your life being for Allah and everything in your life having a complete wholeness. Malat al-Ibrahim, our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says in a narration that's in the continuation of, our, of Abu Dawood that says, the greatest days with Allah is the day of Nahar. And he also says the, date, the, the day of the great pilgrimage is Nahar. This convening location, brothers and sisters, this time in which our brothers and sisters are in movement, they are in rest, they are in victory. We are recognizing this moment in a collective community expression. We are not anything without the individual alignment, but also the collective alignment. 
When we see the prophets, the great imams that have come before, the tafsirs of the Qur'an, you can study Al-Tabari, the great imam who lived in the 21st century, the great imam Warathdi Muhammad, also indicated in his tafsirs that he encouraged us to also use logic to its proper conclusion. So Ibrahim Hanifa, used, we know him as this model man. He was an inquisitive man. He was a man who was seeking to understand the heavens, the stars, the universe. We ourselves must be an example like that. But this Imam, Imam Warfdi Muhammad also says that in, in continuation of us recognizing that the prophets lived and existed, also recognize that they are also prototypes. The example of how you can live your life to be Ibrahim, to be Musa alayhi salam, to be Nuh, to be Sali, to be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his character, in his excellent obedience as a model. As an example, وَمَنَ السِّنَّةِ فَرَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ Our Prophet Muhammad. And we know in authentic hadith of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in two narrations, it says that he is, we know that he says, إِنَّ اللَّهُ كَتَبَ الْحَسْنَةَ عَلَىٰ كُلِي شَيْءٍ I have prescribed excellence in all things. وَعَيْدٍ And also he says that my companions are like stars. Each and every one of them you can be guided by them. In this day of standing, in this day of Eid al-Adha, this recurring happiness, this recurring joy, this is an opportunity for you to extend that out, brothers and sisters, that you can be like those companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that you are a star, that you are a najm, that you are out there being an example to the world in your moral, ethical, spiritual courage. In a time of difficulty, yusra, that after difficulty comes relief. But you must follow this. And we know that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, excuse me, and Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra, in this guidance of recognizing this high standard that we have to achieve, but recognizing that there is difficulties in the world that we live in. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَمَّا فَحُوَى فِي الْآقِتِ الْأَمَّا وَعَدَّلُ السَّبِيلَ But those who are blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter and most astray from the path. Most astray from the path. We seek spiritual balance. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wal fi akhira hasanatan wa kina adabanad. Wa aidan wa batagi fi ma attack Allah at darad akhir wa latin sana si the kamina dunya. Our Lord, we ask you, we beg you, we beseech you, our Lord, give us good in this world. Give us good in the hereafter and save us from the fire. But also, wa aidan, and also we ask Allah. But but we ask for you to help us recognize that we want to get our share in this world as well. But we also recognize that there's a final bowl that we have to go to, simplifying, paraphrasing it. But these two spiritual balances, the same balance that our sister, Hajar, my grandmother's name was Hagar. That, and growing up in the American South, many of you all are familiar with that name of Hajar, Hagar. That word is not, that name is not given out as much anymore to young people or uh, to, as a child. But we know our sister Hagar, Hajar, was searching and seeking and yearning, looking for spiritual, looking for a help. And many of you all can understand that story of Hagar, of Hajar, seeking, moving from Safa to Marwa, in difficulty, in strength. The tafsir of the great Imam, the 21st century intellectual, he encouraged and said that this searching, this movement, this, this, this moving of going back and forth is also an example to see your circumstances in your life, the difficulty of the woman. The woman in the West, the woman in the East who struggles, who bears the burden because of men who leave them, because of women who have uh, dealt with the difficult blows because a husband has died, etc. So in Hajar, in Hagar, you should see yourself moving, yearning, looking for intercession, looking for assistance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Wasabri, wasta'inu, wasabri, wasala, seek assistance and patience and prayer. Who had that assistance and patience and prayer? Hagar, Hajar, she had it in the moment. She was steadfast. She had istaqimu, istikamat. She had straightness and she was committed. So that yearning, these rituals that we reenact that we re-engage every single year as an opportunity, as an invitation, that we go as we move through Safar and Marwa, yearning and looking for water, looking for help, asking you brothers, you sisters should be able to think about these. We're not just stuck in the rituals. The rituals point to something deeper. 
The rituals point to something much more uh, cosmological, something more metaphysical, something more spiritual for you all to yearn for, for me to yearn for, to understand the guidance of what Allah wants, right? And as we move from Safar to Marwa, as she moved, as, she, as we engage in the rituals and the act, she was then given the assistance that she needed. And this spring that we all know and we will consume, or we have consumed in Zamzam becomes that nourishment, right? But interesting, pay attention to the history. Don't stay in the rituals themselves, but as the tradition we know, at least the normative tradition of Islam we know that's out there, is that she placed her feet down on her heels. And we know the tradition of the heels having a sense of strength. They give you backbone, they give you assistance, they give you root. So she was rooted in a tradition, firmly established. Fakim din Hanifa. Establish yourself and turn your orientation, wajhaka, every essence of your being, and turn yourself right and toward the original nature. Fitra, coming back to the essence. So after we've just completed a few months ago the rituals of Ramadan, we then had the moment, the opportunity in which Allah granted us this. The abundance of Allah has given us this collective community expression. Brothers and sisters, understand very closely that these rituals that we perform also give us an example that scripture is also the illumination of social and human life. If you cannot see scripture to apply toward your life, then you aren't reading scripture properly. But in scripture, we recognize that Abraham Hanifa comes from a tradition of the past, Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu who we've been honored. We've been honored with the opportunity to be part of the great prophets that have come before. Imagine if you, were during, you lived during the time of Nuh. Imagine if you lived during the time of Musa. Imagine if you lived during the time of all the prophets that have come about. But you have now lived under the time of Muhammad, Habibullah, Muhammad al-Mustafa, Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you have been able to come into that ummah, and you have, can become that example. Brothers and sisters, anyone who wants anything other than the religion of Ibrahim Hanifa makes himself a fool. The tradition of Abraham recognizes that our brothers and sisters in our Jewish tradition, in our Christian tradition, are one uh, part of the human family and Allah has given us an invitation to be part of the Ummah of Muhammad and that we have had this high standard to live up. But it's an invitation. You know, when someone invites you into your house, some people you invite, some people you don't. Think about this, brothers. Scripture is the illumination of social and human life. If you get an invitation, you offer it, you respect that invitation, or you say, I decline. Allah has honored you, brothers and sisters, to be part of that. And Allah says that uh, He is the Rabbi al alameen that He is what? He is the Lord of the worlds. He didn't say He is the Rabbi al muslimin stuck for Allah. He didn't say he is, the, he is the Lord of the Turks. He did not say He's the Lord of the Arabs. He did not say He's the Lord of the Africans. Allah said He is the Rabbi al alameen He's the Lord of all the worlds. That allows you to be a universal man. That allows you to be a collective man. That allows you to be a collective woman. That allows you to take your place in history. That we know that the tradition of Prophet Muhammad says that knowledge is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he sees it, he takes it. But correct knowledge. When we say ikra, ikra bismi rabbika alladhi qala, that we, the Prophet Sallallahu he wasn't able to read in what we know the, 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 the secular world, but he was being guided by God, that he was being guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and Allah was putting back into his vessel and creating, as we say in this great tradition, in this, this community, he was creating the model man. Look at language, how we articulate our language. The model man. When we say Sunnah of Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu in this great day of, 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 of the Eid, this is correct knowledge in putting out. When we talk about even language of the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, what do we mean? Throughout the world we say the Sunnah, we talk about the Sunnah. The Sunnah of the smile, the Sunnah of, of a nice word, or is it just the Sunnah of just external? 
The better expression and using layman's simple language is also the life example of Muhammad the Prophet The life, how did he live his life in his moral, his ethical, his spiritual excellence? The life example of Muhammad the Prophet still connects to the Sunnah, but it allows for when you are extending yourself and introducing people to your example and your way of life, you are showing them something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Min al mukminin rajulin sadaku ma ahdahu Allah alayha fa minhum min qadda nahbahu wa minhum min yaktadra wa ma badalu tabadila. Amongst the believers, and amongst the believers, excuse me, uh, they are content to what has been provided to them. And they fulfill their words to the death. And amongst them, it is he who awaits the decree, and they don't ever waver. Brothers and sisters, for simple, plain language, amongst the believers, there are people who are committed to the end, who are steadfast, who are consistent, who have progressed, who have stuck to what I would characterize as we have a life. Our life begins with a logic and discipline. What is the logic? The logic is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad and Rasulullah. What are the disciplines for simple things that you take away? Imams come give khutbahs, individuals talk and they lecture. But what is the simple essence we want for this day of Eid, right? That our life has a logic. We go on at our fat. We perform the rituals. We come together getting to know one another. Despite our ideological interpretations and differences and places we come throughout the world, but we convene in that moment of exchanging, of prayer, of reflection, of meditation. Our life begins with logic. The great Imam, 21st, intellect, 21st century intellectual, he said, that use logic to its proper conclusion. And the great Maliki jurist, Imam Akhdari says, use logic to increase your, lose, lose, use logic to increase your spiritual focus. Similar, but same things. Great men who have come before, giving you practical information in the 21st century, but historically rooted as well. Our life begins with logic and disciplines. Our life, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad and Rasulullah. What is that saying? La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah is saying that you have your first level of consciousness is having regardfulness of Allah, having taqwa openly and secretly, right? Having this regardfulness for Allah, having this, uh, this, this, this mindfulness for Allah, and doing it in purpose, but also deeper than just saying that you, by lip words and service that you believe in Allah, what is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is your relationship? What is your cultivation of understanding Allah? It's not just important just to acknowledge, but how are you experiencing the great uh, the great traditions of the past says that we just don't understand Islam of books, but we also study Islam of taste. How are you experiencing, tasting Islam on an everyday basis? Brothers and sisters, these are important as we think about, as we close this first part of the khutbah, and understanding the three more, most important things. In the first progression in our time of Ramadan, we had three threes, self-discovery, self-mastery, and self-determination as an individual, working on your lower self, working on your own individual self. And, and Allah says in Surah Al-Fatir, He talks about those are women whom though, there are those who are zalimi li nafsihi. There are those who oppress their own souls for various reasons. We all do. And then women whom there are amongst those who are muhtasid. They take a middle path. They take that spiritual balance as I mentioned to you earlier. They take that, those du'as, those supplications, they take the middle way on everything and their perfection, their whole essence. And then, women whom there are those who are dhalimi nafsihi muqtasid. And then the third progression, women whom and amongst them, there are those who are sabak bal kairat. They are excellent, they go overboard. They take the extra direction. They decide to go in overtime. They decide to do those extra moments because guess what? They, ne they know there's going to be a day when they're going to be oppressing their own soul. They know when they're not going to have that spiritual middle balance. And they seek to put away a little investment like for retirement. They know that their day will come when they will meet their Lord and they will have to be barren alone and they seek to be in that divine presence. 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار. Brothers and sisters, in this most beautiful occasion, the takbirat of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah ilham, these chants, these these remembrances, these are outward words we say. But every aspect of your limb is in a state of dhikr every single day. Allah says in Quran, Allah bi dhikri la tattamin inna al Verily in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find tranquility. We want to have what Allah says in Quran, a qalb al-salim, a pure heart, a soft heart, a heart that's at rest, a heart that is in constant purity. Allah says in another verse in the Quran after we mentioned the previous verse of Allah says in, in Surah in, in the 26th Surah 78 He is the one who has created me and he is the one who guides me. And so all aspects of our life, the dua also dua but also a verse in the Quran Allah says Kun inna salati wa nusiki wa ma Say indeed, my prayers, my rights, my sacrifices, my life, and my death are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, let's recognize that Eid al-Fitrah is the celebration of the victory of the human nature, and Eid al-Adha is celebration of the victory of the intellect as well. It is the collective celebration as well. Brothers and sisters, let's also recognize that look about and think about the sacrifice. The sacrifice of being able to, being willing to give your own child for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you would be willing to give everything. Think about how many women out there would be willing to die for their children. How many men would be willing to die for their children? Think about the internal sacrifice it takes. And then Allah intervenes and offers this, this moment of saying, O oh, pure heart, O, oh, in, 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 in simplistic terminology, O oh, one who recognizes that there is only one who should be worshipped and created, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thank you. And I appreciate your devotion, and instead comes in with a lamb in which we go and we sacrifice. But look at the logic of this, brothers and sisters that this sacrifice of the lamb also re recognizes that we aren't wasteful with that. That we take care of those animals and we make sure that they are given the proper ingredients. A part of a rhetorical question to you is, how are we continue that great tradition of that sacrifice even in the modern era? How are we making sure that we're not wasteful with that lamb? How are we being mindful that we're giving out to the needy with that lamb? How are we also recognized even with the wisdom of the lamb? We know that the wise who have come before, the spiritual men of, who have come before, the pious men who have come before, that the lamb is symbolic of the prophets and pious people as well. If you go anywhere throughout the world, if you go to the highlands in Scotland, if you go out of Washington, D.C. and take a fresh air, and you go to the mountains of West Virginia, you go to North Africa, you can see at times lamb who are standing strong with a footed foundation. And they are having, they could be on the top of a hill. And on that top of that hill, they're still having that strength and that balance. There's no coincidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered this, these lamb. Look at the symbolism, the meaning behind what Allah gives us. Understand that the rituals also point to a logic. The rituals point to a deeper logic in how we should live our life. The food, one part air, one part water, one part prayer. That is deeply spiritual, that's deeply, deeply practical as well. But that balance, right, also of the lamb also is how we should live our life. As you go up into the challenges of life, look at the lamb. 
who goes through difficulties, who can stand on one foot, who can be on top of a hill. How are we being an example of that and using that story of a lamb in our own life? How are you reaching spiritual balance? How are you following it in a way where it's practical for your life too as well? And we know that our Prophet Muhammad, and we know that within the tradition of Islam, that also that the Kaaba itself, in it is the first house built for all mankind, as Allah says in the Quran, that the Kaaba is a sign of how mankind is to be established. The Kaaba itself, these aren't just going around in circumambulation and going around these rituals. This is also pointing to something very deeper, deeper in our own self. That it is a sign of how establishment of a life, how you can move yourself from not following idolatry or, or, or following idols and, and putting, or let's, let's simplify this. Instead of idols, putting your orientation to things that don't give you life. That's, this, let's take out the old language that oftentimes can limit people's understanding and false perception of religion and let's bring it out to the modern 21st century. How are we coming back and respecting the good nature of who we are as black, as brown, as yellow, as red, as someone who is from China, someone who is Canadian, someone who is, uh, who is throughout the world in Uzbekistan? How are we mindful of that and coming back to that moment? Right now, we see the difficulties that our brothers who are facing and uh, who are Uyghurs, who are facing persecution right now in China. How are we coming back? Our brothers, some who are in the diaspora, some who are in exile, who made that pilgrimage this year, who are on the Hajj, who are there. Make your dua a dua of supplication to recognize them. But let's not just go international. How are you recognizing the difficulties of individuals who are inner cities right here in Washington, D.C., and in Southeast Anacostia, in New York, in South Carolina, in California, who are in favelas in Brazil, who are in Colombia affected by the impact of the post aftermath of the FARC in Colombia. All throughout the world, there are struggles. It's just another day in Pakistan. It's just another day in Sri Lanka. It's just another day in Somalia. It's just another day in Nigeria. It's just another day in South Africa. It's just another day in Chicago. No, let's recognize and use these moments. And this Eid al-Adha, this recurring happiness, this recurring joy to recreate and find an example of creating a model community. Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu broke down false perception of religion as well. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu came in and, and broke down the social and ethnic hierarchy that had been regulating internally Arabian society. So let's be mindful of that and being present in the moment, being mindful of how we can work on our own internal self. Seize the moment for this moment. It, there might not be another moment that you have at all. Let's follow the minhaj of not just worrying about the methodology of saying, I follow this particular minhaj. Follow the minhaj of good character. Follow the minhaj of akhlaq. Follow the methodology, the framework of good character towards someone else. Extending a perfect smile. Recognizing that as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, Habbub watani min iman, that love of country is part of faith. Brothers and sisters, we come here having over 40 nationalities in here at Mashin Muhammad. The point of gravity, the center of Islamic gravity right now is right here in the United States. We have come, individuals who have come from various means, some who have left because of religious persecution by fellow Muslims, others who have escaped persecution because they could not express their Islam in a pure way, others who escaped for a better opportunity, others who were brought here by force, whatever the story, whatever the reason, let's turn our orientation making sure that faqim wajhaka lid-deen hanifa fitr lati fitratun nas alayh establish yourself or establish your orientation and sacrifice your life sacrifice for the better collective make sure that your slaughter that your particular sacrifice today that your slaughter your symbolic slaughter following proper logic is dispelling religious ignorance that is harming that is detrimental toward our thriving Muslim Ummah. 
slaughter religious ignorance, false perception of what religion is. As we know, the great prophets and great stories who have come before, we know that we have been given the model and example of destroying these false perceptions to also help us elevate our own human life. Brothers and sisters, let's also make sure that we work on loving one another, loving ourselves, and being that example for the collective world. Stay with enlightened people as well. Stay with people who will increase your logic. Stay with people who will aid you in your own spiritual understanding. Work on your own internal renewal. Work on making sure that your global positioning system, your internal global positioning system, is one that is being guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have an internal GPS system. We're so dependent on one based off of the world. But how are we moving and making sure that our internal GPS system is one that is thriving, that is based off what Allah wants? I'm moving through this quickly because I see that I'm being told that Time is running out. <laughs> we ask Allah to make sure that brothers and sisters that we, on this day of Eid, that we recognize that tomorrow is not promised. Every single day we have these moments where we know and we say we, bur we buried one of our sisters who is a pioneer in this community and we says inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un that to Allah we come, to Allah we return. But every day we, were, we are returning and we are coming back to Allah. Allah says, Kulun nafsin da'ikatul maut. Right? Every soul shall taste death. Tabaraka alladhi ba'id al muk wa hu ala kuri shay kadir. Alladhi kalaka al maut wal hayat li ablu kum ayakum asana amala hu raziz go forth. Right? That he who created death and life be vigilant to recognize that we have had a death. Death of our own inclinations that have not given us life. As Sayyidina Ali says, die before you die. Die to that negativity. Die to those bad qualities and those brothers and sisters who have convened on Hajj and the young ones who have convened on Hajj. They have died to the negativity and they have been born again, cleansed, cleaned, and have come back to their original essence. And they have followed the tradition of the Milat al-Ibrahim, the pattern of Abraham the upright. Brothers and sisters, what a beautiful motto. And think about this as well. Let's also dispel and make sure that we establish masjids that are built on piety and built on strength. And so the modern day manifestation of masjid dara, a masjid not built on piety, not built on, 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 on the purity. And we know that some Muslims were asking for it to be destroyed and wanting to destroy it. But in the modern day 21st century, the decision to destroy a particular place in sacred house of worship is not necessary. How do we destroy and move this up to the modern day times? How do we destroy the negativity? How do we destroy groups who seek to distort our beautiful presentation of Islam who come in the form of saying they're groups like Boko Haram and ISIS, etc. Let's use the example of the model man, Muhammad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We close in dua, Oh Allah, I cannot manage this life without you. Please make of my life what you want it to be, what you prefer it to be. Do not allow me to act on my own. Help me to act only in obedience to you, Allah. We hear and we obey. Submit now wa ta'na. Forgive us. We are av forgive us. We are asking forgiveness. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan. Wa fi akhira hasanatan. Wa kina adha binar. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fati lima uglik lima qatimi bis sabak. Nasir al-haq bil-haq wa al-hadi ila siratika al-mustaqim wa ala alihi qadri wa maqdari al-adhima. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad salatan tanjina biha min jami al-ahwari wa al-fat. Wa taqtihi lanna biha jami al-hajat. Wa taqtahuna biha min jami al-sayat. Wa tarfahuna biha indaka ala darjat. Wa tabliguna biha al-aqsa al-gayat min jami al-qayrat. Fi al-hayat wa ba'd al-mamat. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sadliman tasliman kathira. Hasbun Allah wa ni'man wa kiya ni'man mawla wa ni'man masih la hawla la qawwata illa la bila ali azim. Brothers and sisters, it was a pleasure. And let's go out and enjoy one another in this most beautiful occasion for the Eid. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak. Kul um wa antum bakhir.
Eid Mubarak. Alhamdulillah. Are you Tijani? No, but I studied. See, I